Welcome to Democratically Speaking. I'm your host, Mark Lindy, and I'm the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And here in Brockton, February 2nd, we have a special election. I have one of my favorite people in Brockton, Shirley Asak, who is a city councilor, who is running for the seat. All good folks running for the office. Shirley, welcome. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for being here. Um, special election in the dead of winter. Okay, snow's flied a little bit, not much. Hopefully it won't, like it did last year. How is it out there campaigning in the cold and the wind and the snow? We're having lots of fun. We're doing a great job campaigning. Uh, that's a joke. That's <laughs> a joke. I get it. Um, no, we're, we're out there and it, the cold does affect the campaign. You know, it's obvious. Um, it's not easy uh, when the weather is, uh, is against us. You know, we could get more done if the weather cooperated. So hopefully we'll get a few sunny days in. Okay. Um, why are you running for state rep? Okay, uh, this race, there's a, a special election. Uh, Michael Brady moved from the state rep seat to the state senate seat, so there's a vacancy. And there were three of you running for the seat. Correct. And we were big supporters of Mike's, uh, Mike Brady. Uh, we believed in him and we supported him. And now the, the seat is open and um, it gave, you know, when the seat became open, I thought about it and I figured this is a good way for me to be able to serve my community at a different level, you know, just to bring uh, what's important to Brockton to the state, to the state house. Now you're a city councilor right now, you were re-elected to your second term in November, yes. Ward 7, or, or some people would say the Park and Recreation District with D.W. Field Park. Mm -hmm. um, do you think your experience on the city council will help you to go to the next level and be a state rep? Of course. That's ex that's what I'm hoping. Uh, the experience of being involved in the community and in the community of Brockton to know what our community needs um, is going to help being at the state house. It's um, this is all about the city of Brockton. It's all about us. It's about our community, and I'm looking uh, forward to working for our community at at the state house. Now, this district is specifically. Mm -hmm the city of Brockton. All 12 of the precincts are within Brockton proper. The other two representative districts, uh, Representative Dubois district is part of Brockton, West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater. Representative Cronin is part of Brockton in Easton. Correct. This is all Brockton. This is 12 precincts out of the 28 in Brockton. So how do you think that the city council and the state rep a good at tie together. I know this is a special election. Um, you get to run for it all over again. Whoever wins gets to run for it again in September all over again, not even nine months from now. It seems like there's always an election. How do you think the two things mesh together? Um, first off, I'd like to to say that it's important to me. That's why the seat's important to me because it is all Brockton. Uh, I call it the heart of Brockton and that's why I'm, I'm, I really want, I'm working for it and I'm working hard to get this because Brockton's important to me. As far as um, how the city council and uh, this will work together is, I mean, it is it my job with the city council and do that, I mean, it's a plus. The uh, citizens of Brockton are going to have some, um, if I'm successful and elected, they will have somebody that knows the issues, that knows how city government works, and uh, has already worked on legislation. I've been working on ordinances from day one once I got on to um, the city council, um, tried to resolve issues that we have. Um, this is a plus for the city of Brockton to have some one of their own. I mean, own. I mean, we're all one of their own, but somebody that's been involved in the community, that's been there, that goes to everything, that already represents the community to bring it to the state house. Now let's talk the Shirley Asak story. Tell us some of the voters that may not be familiar with you, because you're running outside of your ward. Your ward seven. Right. This comprises one precinct in ward five two precincts in Ward 4, three precincts in Ward 3, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So you're, you're, you're known throughout the city, but you're more well known in Ward 7. Um, talk about your experience, your life history. What gives you unique characteristics and qualifications to be a state rep? Okay. Well, um, that is true. I represent Ward 7, which uh, you know is a certain part of the city. But um, I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Brockton, and I've lived in almost every ward except for Ward, I believe, one and four. Okay. I've, throughout my years, I grew up in Ward six. I've uh, lived in Ward um, two, three, and seven. So, um, 
and, and five possibly. So there's just a few wards, but I've lived in a, a few of them. So throughout my life in Brockton, I've been involved uh, for many years with whether it was um, as a um, youth group leader, uh, with my uh, church community, I've been involved. Uh, Tell I've us which church? St. Teresa's Church, very proud of that, on okay. Main Street. Uh, so I'm very proud of my um, church life. I'm proud of um, my uh, community involvement. And then later when I uh, had children, got married, I was involved with the school um, school system. So I've been involved with just about many schools. Uh, everyone that my kids, my kids have been a few different schools for a re because of a program that they're in. So I've been involved, whether it started out at the Kennedy School and continues on to the high school right now. So when Mike, I was involved with their school when they were at that particular um, school. I was involved with the PACs, with the parents, and um, even with the administrators. Oh, I gotta say, you have two of the cutest, nicest kids that I ever met. Okay. Oh, I'm proud of them. When I them. was lucky enough to pass out spaghetti over at the senior picnic in yeah. the summer, your girls were there with flowers for yeah. everybody because that's what you do. Now, what you've been doing, mm -hmm. okay, you've been a small business woman here in the city of Brockton. You have your own florist business. Um, one of the things that might come up, um, there's a couple of debates coming up. I believe I'm going to be a participant in one or more of them. One question would be full time mother state representative, city councilor, business person, how do you juggle all of that? I always think that people have a tough time in life. I, I juggled a few jobs here along the way, but I mean, being a mom is, is, mm -hmm. is, 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 a, is more than a full-time job all by itself. What are your plans if you're successful in this seat? What are you gonna, what are you gonna keep? What are you not gonna keep? How would that all work? Okay, comment on the senior picnic, one of my favorite events throughout the year when I, I love attending the senior picnic and giving out flowers. So I look, we look forward to that and so do my kids and, and it's in the middle of the summer. And um, as far as juggling everything, I'm a big believer in the more you do, the more you get done. And um, I, when things go together, they flow nicely. You know, uh, it's an organization of how I organize my personal life. My kids, um, you know, I'm, I've always been a working mom from day one. I've been working since I was 15 and nine months, and it's never stopped. And, um, you know, when you're used to working, you, you get the job done, and that's what I hope to do with the state, um, you know, as a state representative if I'm successful. The, um, what I, the change would be that I would put my business aside. I am a small business owner, and that is something that I built from the ground up. I branded it, and it's built an amazing clientele. We're well known and throughout the city, and we've been very involved in the community as a small business. Um, but that would take a back seat because I feel this is a calling for me. I feel like this is a good way for me to be able to serve my community as a state representative. Um. Let's talk about issues. Well, first of all, before I leave the Shirley Azak story, I didn't know some stuff about you, and I consider myself a pretty educated voter and very involved in politics, but you weren't my city council because I live in Ward 1. Okay. okay. Talk about your background. Talk about your educational background. One thing I learned, um, I mean, I, 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 I know that you speak more than one language, and in a city like Brockton, as diverse in Bro as Brockton is, that's helpful. Talk about that. Well. Um, I'm a very proud Brocktonian, so I'm a graduate of Brockton High School. You know, I'm a product of Brockton Public Schools. Um, after high school, I chose, uh, well, I believe the decision chose me. I ended up in, uh, I had the opportunity to study, to go to college in Paris, France. So when I went to Paris, I majored in uh, business and uh, in design. Mm -hmm. And after I, I did five years of um, University out in Paris, and I had the opportunity to work for a magazine, a, a big American magazine called Harper's Bazaar. Mm -hmm. I was the assistant to the editor in Paris, and after that, um, we developed a small. I, I went into uh, business with one of my professors, and we developed what's called a private label we, as far as designing clothes. So mm -hmm. um, I ended up spending some time in Paris. I did always come home. I, and the amazing thing is, I was in this amazing city. Got to travel all over Europe, but. Brockton was always home. Like this is where I looked forward to coming home during my summers when I was away, and sometimes when I and when I was working and earning, uh, you know, make, getting a paycheck, I would come home for even a week or a weekend just um, to see my family. This is where my family, um, you know, was, and this is where we spent uh, our time was with them in Brockton. 
So um, after college, um, I had the I was working, I was doing very well, but um, my I, my dad was um, was sick. He had heart issues, so it was hard being far from my family. Even though that's where I had gone to college, and where I had chosen to take a career path, so I had to relook at all that and relocate and come back to to the United States. With my background, it was hard to find something in Brockton. So what, there was a career change. I went into customer service. Um, I was doing working in banking. Um, I worked for you know a few different. I don't know if I should, but sure. Harbor One, and I'm proud of that. Sure. It, it will always be Brockton Credit Union to me. That's where I started. Where we, my mom opened our first uh, savings account at Brockton Credit Union. So I worked for them for many years. I worked for First National Bank. I worked for numerous um, as, as far as customer service went. Um, and that's when I met my husband, and uh, that's where the, I am multilingual, and we had the French connection. We, we spoke French, which was I'm um, very proud of. And uh, we decided, I made a decision to make my life here in Brockton. This is where I was going to raise my family. This was where I was going to invest. My husband and I were going to invest in the city. So that's, um, you know, it's a, bit, it's a long story. It um, sure is. <laughs> now, your, your mother and your dad, uh, Lebanon? Correct. Yes, I'm a daughter of immigrant parents. They came here when I was very young, and um, and back in the early '70s is when they um, came to Brockton. And they actually, if it's an it's a story, and um, they didn't plan on coming to um, you know to immigrate here. They came here on. We have my dad's family's originally from. Well, they had they had many generations were already here in the area in the Bridgewaters and Brockton. And um, they were just here on vacation, and they, you know, with the issues that go on in the world, they weren't able to go back to their country. So, um, so well. everybody knows the Asak family. My mother taught over at the Winthrop School, and I think it was one of the Davids. There were multiple Davids. Okay, she had students over there. Um, she had mothers that used to bring her grape leaves to class, mm -hmm. and yeah, all of that. It was a wonder. It was a wonderful school, and it was a wonderful environment. And like you said, the church is a pillar over there. They still mm -hmm. are. We all go to the Lebanese festival every year. We get to go from the Lebanese to the Greek, Greek. to you name it in Brockton. We have the that's Cape the Verde nice, now. That's the, the Cape, nice yes. thing about Brockton. Mm -hmm. One of the really nice things about Brockton. So. Talk about a little bit about what your issues are going up to Beacon Hill, what you want to accomplish. Um, um, I ran for rep a few years back, and I had certain things that I wanted to bring to the table. Education was one of my big issues. And uh, tell me what yours are. It Education is right up there. It's at the top of the list. It's really about bringing funding back to the city of Brockton. We're, getting, um, we're not getting our fair share of funding as far as our... Um, you know, Chapter 70 money. We need to advocate for our students. We we have amazing kids in the city, and we need to somebody that's going to work hard to advocate for funding. And um, that's my one of my biggest issues. One of the first things I would be doing, as well as um, I'm very passionate about the Downtown College Collaborative, which not everybody knows about. But there was a plan. Um, the city council, the city of Brockton, sold the state uh, building on Main Street um, right at the end of Deval Patrick's uh, term, and it was sold uh, for nothing, uh, pretty much. And um, it was so it would house the uh, downtown college collaborative, which is made up of Massasoit, um, UMass Boston, and well, UMass and also uh, Bridgewater State University. And this was uh, the plan was to be able to bring them to have uh, like a satellite uh, college down to our main street, and um, for whatever reason that uh, it was all set. And now with the new administration, it seemed with the new governor's administration, it seems to have been taken. Put back on the back burner for now, and that's something that I will advocate for. One of the first things I will do, um, if I'm successful state representative, is sit down with our governor and just stress the importance of this college collaborative for our city. We've spent a lot of money on our downtown. We've gotten a lot of grants. We've um, a lot of money has been invested in, in the city. But if we don't get this college collaborative, that's going to bring in a, a different. I'm going to say clientele, a different group of people that's going to come in to invest in the city. 
you know, everybody says we need restaurants, we need, you know, diff somewhere Book for people. Bookstores and yeah, Wi-Fi cafes correct. would be my choice. Yes, and, and they're all wonderful, but if we don't have somebody going to them, we can have all the business... It's not going, a business, I'm a business owner and I wouldn't come in somewhere unless you sh I see who the clientele is. You always go to the area, you see, you, you check, it, check it out, see where, um, you know, it's all about location and locations because of who, or the habit, who lives there. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to make, bring in a different type of clientele, whether it's students, whether it's profess professors or other professionals. So it, they go together. Just having the businesses there and not having a new, um, new foot, you know, foot traffic. It's not. We can spend all the money, but it's really it. It's not going to work for for Brockton. So we need them. So on that education, there's another part of that package. Um, I teach at Massasoit mm -hmm. Community College. Full disclosure. Okay, I'm, I've been there for 23 years, and we've been waiting 10 or longer for a life sciences building. Mm -hmm. And because the campus is full, it's overcrowded, there's a waiting list to get into that program. And as we know, Chris Sagat has passed away. State yes. bought the property. It's a nice parking lot now, mm -hmm. but it's not supposed to be a parking lot. It's supposed to be the new building and the new kind of gateway to Massasoit. That stalled at the same time. Correct. Okay. Um, I know you feel passionate about that. I've heard you talk about that already. Um, so your plan is to go knock on the governor's door? and say, I want to have a conversation about this, and um, it can't wait. Definitely, and I'm going to ask, what do we need to do? What is the reason that it has been put off? And as a community, he needs to understand how important it is to us because, you know, there's grants, uh, you know, you hear of grants that we've gotten. I believe, you know, we got one yesterday, but it, it, there's no sense in developing if we don't develop this college collaborative. Okay, other issues. Uh, education is certainly one. Mm -hmm. um, you've been dealing as a city council with public safety. Mm -hmm. Public safety is a huge issue in Brockton. We, we have all sorts of things happening. This is a good city. However, bad things happen in the city. What could you do as a state rep to, to make sure Brockton gets its fair share, maybe for law enforcement or, or public safety? That's where I'm hoping. Public safety is very important and, it, and it's... Um, it's very uh, vast, like it's, you know, it's not just police, it, it's um, a lot of things that cover public safety. But I would um, work to advocate to see what is available as far as monies, grants, that we can bring back to hire more. We need more bodies on the force. We need, we need to have cruises for them. It's, there's no sense in having bodies if they don't have the vehicles. Um, to make sure they're using up-to-date equipment. I mean, I visited the, um, you know, our police station. I'll be honest. I had a tour and with a fellow counselor, and I, I just, they need to be in a at least a building that's you know up to uh, updated and use equipment that's that's there, you know, that's updated as well as everything else. We need to make it easier for them to do their job. Mm -hmm. So that's something I would do is definitely advocate to bring, see where the funds are and bring, um, bring them back to the city of Brockton. Now, so you get your door knocker there, kind of hot off the presses, okay? What's on there? Anything we haven't talked about yet? Any of the issues that we haven't talked about yet? Um, there are definitely the opioid epidemic. That's, that's huge. That affects all of us. And not, uh, if it doesn't affect us directly, it it's affected our, um, you know, neighbor, uh, some, a neighbor, a friend, a friend's friend. And it's, heart, it's heartbreaking. And I know that we've developed many different, there's different programs avail available to, um, to families, to kids. But it's, once again, it comes back to education. We need to educate our, uh, our kids. We need to educate our community. And um, really, I'm pushing, it, it needs to be looked at differently. It needs to be looked, the um, overdose epidemic or the drug epidemic needs to be looked at more as um, somebody with an addiction. It's more of an illness than a crime, and we have to stop treating it as a crime and work to bringing a, um, real, there, it's already in pro a progress to bring a drug court to Brockton, but maybe work on speeding up the process. Now, being involved in government already, you have working relationships with other people. Yes. Okay. Good working relationship. I, I, okay. I pride myself on this. Um, you will be part of a delegation where you have a state senator, two other representatives. I know you've served with one of them on the city council. That would be Representative Dubois. You served with Mike 
Brady. Um, he was the rep, so you weren't on the council then, but no. you worked with him and you said you supported him. How would you describe your working relationships with others and do you think that's an asset? Definitely an asset, um, and I, like I said, I pride myself with it. In the past few years, even before I was a city councilor, I worked on building relationships, working relationships, not, you know, more about um, how can we work together to make our community um, work better. And uh, yes, I did serve with uh, a state rep Dubois, and I know a state rep Cronin very, very well, and um, as well as our new senator, um, uh, Brady. But I actually, this if I am successful, this would be the first um, all-female delegation. And um, I, it, I look forward to working with the two other reps. I think we can really um, work well together and uh, create possibly a, a location that's, uh, you know, accessible to everybody here in Brockton, like have an office that where our constituents can have somewhere to go and find us as of, you know, right now there isn't, there is no office, there is no local office for constituents to contact their state reps. So I'm looking forward to working with them. Um, and I've, I work well with my other colleagues and, um, and it, this job, it's, it's about building relationships. It's building about, not just with colleagues, but also with the different communities in our, um, in our city. We're a very diverse city. I have, um, you know, within the different groups that make up our community, I've met with the different organizations. And I have to say, I, my job is to really listen to them and bring their voice to, 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 to the state house to bring it to get some answers and work with them to find what's best for the city for our community and it's all about us and if you look at your Facebook it looks like there's a lot of diverse people supporting your candidacy for this Correct. office uh, some folks from Haitian Community Partners Cape Verde Association different not official endorsements from the organization but a lot of the really strong mm -hmm. people from the organization because I think the nonprofits nonprofits Correct. can endorse but People can because people are the voters. Okay, first female delegation. I didn't think of that. We've, in Brockton, in the past, we've had two females and then one male. But this could be a historic first. You're right. Okay. Speaking of that, history happened in Brockton on inauguration day where there were two sisters. Correct. That got on. You got your sister roped into all of this too. I know Joyce is very uh, personable and she's a real estate agent. And she gets along with everybody, but she went to the next level. Do you think you inspired her to uh, get involved? Um, I would like to think that maybe I inspired her sooner than later, you know, somehow I inspired her, but I'm very proud of her. She, even though she acts like the older sister, she is the younger one, but um, I'm very proud of her, and um, I always say that Brockton's very lucky to have her uh, on our school committee. She, um, she's very involved, she, um, she, knows, she knows the issues, and she knows how to get things done. She's a workaholic, she's a, but she's... So um, two workaholics. Yeah. Because mom taught you, right? And um, dad? You know, they did. My mom's a hard worker, and I thank God every day for her. She's an amazing woman. So it's all about family, and um, we have a lot of great people in the city. I mean, thank you, for, but it's, it's about the city of Brockton. We have a lot of amazing people that are dedicated to the city. Now, what about your, your kids in the campaign and your husband in the campaign? This is a family effort? It is, and that's how I ran my city council campaign, and that's um, how the state rep campaign is also going in that direction. It's it's all family, but I have I'm very lucky. I have some very important people that are have, that are with me that have offered their support, that they are um, volunteers. I mean, I'm um, I'm overwhelmed with the support that I've gotten from certain individuals. I um, have an amazing campaign manager and. Um, you can say who it is. Bishop Tony Branch. Okay. Uh, he's a, I'm very lucky to have him um, helping me with this campaign and to um, to work with him. It, he's he's amazing to work with. So. Now, if you get there, House committees. Did you give it any thought? When I I did tons of public appearances in about ten debates. Okay. I, this is a much more abbreviated campaign mm -hmm. schedule. Did you think about what committee you would want to be on? And freshman reps don't necessarily get to pick their committee. But Correct. if you had the ideal committee or committees, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it's obvious, uh, you know, I, everybody wants to be on the Ways and Means, but then no freshman's going to go on that. I, I did think about it, and I looked at it, but um, I'm also a very... And if I'm elected right now in February, I believe I would just get put into whatever was... Um, 
I believe um, Senator Brady was on the Ways and Means. So I, I'm not sure where they would put me for the few months until the new election. So um, it's, you know, I can... You mentioned education. I, I'm all, yes, would all, you, would definitely. Like an education committee or a public safety committee. There's so definitely. Much, and then there are joint committees. So you're right, definitely. it is a short period of time. People period. forget because there's the February election, and even if there isn't people on the other side of the ballot, on the Republican side, there's still a March election. It coincides with the March 1st presidential primary, so you don't get to be in office till probably the day after, and then as soon as that happens, you're going to run all over again. Correct. Um, what, a, what other issues? What have I missed? Uh, we, we, they told me we have about five minutes left, and I want to make sure I have a couple for you at the okay. end just to kind of summarize and tell the voters why you. Well, at first, I'd like to mention, you had mentioned endorsements, and, um, you know, some people have asked me a lot of times when we fill out questionnaires, people want to know who, ha who has endorsed you, and actually, I, um, I haven't focused on the endorsements of outside, you know, whether it's uh, political figures or groups for to endorse me, but I have focused on the community, on the voters of the 9th Plymouth District, that that's what's important to me is really getting the word out to the voters knowing there's an election and that I need their vote this is about our community this is about the ninth Plymouth district this seat belongs to them and that's who I'm reaching out to um, it that's who's you know I'm looking for their endorsement so now we're not in a debate format we're one-on-one -on -one. I've brought bringing all three of the candidates on as the chair of the party on on my own time why are you different than the other two candidates? I, and I know you've been good friends with Shana, and you are good friends with Shana, and, and I know you know Jerry. Why are you different, Shirley? Why am I different? I think my life experiences have made me different. I, I understand the community. I know what Brockton needs. In this campaign, this job is about the community. About, it's about doing what's best for the community. I'm multilingual. I'm a small business owner. I'm a mom of public that are in kids of, who are in public school right now. I know the issues of right now. I'm um, I'm taking part of it. It's part of our everyday life. So it's um, I have experience, life experience that's going to help the community get what it what it needs and what it uh, what it deserves. Okay. The rest is for you. I'll sum it up in the end. But what do we have, about two minutes, Matt, something like that? Why don't you talk directly to the voters okay. and, and tell them why Shirley? Why Shirley? Shirley is dedicated to you. De Shirley's dedicated to the city of Brockton. She is um, willing to do the job. I'm not... I'm willing to work for you to get the issues resolved. I'm w willing to go that extra step to get get what Brockton needs. I'm not there. I'm not going to the state house for for my own personal gain. I'm there to bring back to the city of Brockton, to our community. And even though we'll be working on state issues and you know issues that are dealt with throughout the state. Even keeping that in mind, it's going to what's how is it going to benefit the city of Brockton, our community? I have no political backing. This is all about the voters of the Ninth Plymouth District. We're working hard to get the word out that you have a choice. I need your vote February second. I need you to vote Shirley Azak. I believe I'm the first name on the ballot. I need you to go out and vote. Hopefully the weather is um, is good. If not, you know, call us. We'll get you to the um, we'll get you to the polls. Uh, find us and we will help you go and get your vote out there. Real quick, real yes. real quick. Phone number, website, real quick. Okay, real quick. Well, website is um, Shirley Azak. It's just my name. Dot com. That's the website. The phone number is five zero eight eight four zero seven nine five seven. 508-840-7957 and Facebook is updated regular, uh, regularly and it's um, so it's my name Shirley Azak for state representative perfect thank you uh, thanks for being on Shirley and well, we'll thank have you, you back well I look forward to it okay. watching democratically speaking uh, Mark Lindy your host uh, stay tuned for more candidates and election coverage and hopefully some debates thank you for joining us